which of these greens is different to the other ones? To be completely honest, I have no idea. But I know that one of them is different because the internet says so. Though, as Abraham Lincoln famously said, don't believe everything you read on the internet just because there's a picture with a quote next to it. So I also checked the original report and it's true. So this colour test was given to loads of Europeans who more or less fail miserably every time. And then it was given to the people of the Himba tribe in Namibia who found it really easily. What's even more fascinating is that when they were shown this selection of colours, the Himbas really struggled to find the odd one out. These people all have exactly the same biological machinery in their eyes as me and you, and especially you if you're a Himba. It's no different. Evolutionarily, they're the same. And yet, they perceive the colours differently. It's all down to language. The Himbas just don't have a word for blue. They've got loads of words for the different shades of sort of bluey green. And that's why they aced the first test. Language and words shape so much more of the way we perceive the world around us than we realise. And that's a problem, because language is a really imperfect human invention, and yet all of our thoughts and feelings are scaffolded by these words. That's why there are so many ideas and concepts that seem completely obvious to some people, and to others, they're alien. And there must be even more ideas and concepts that are right in front of us, and none of us understand. In George Orwell's book, 1984, the people in charge of the police state remove loads of words from the language, like liberty and freedom. Because without those words, people can't really easily contemplate what they mean, let alone talk about them. Returning to colours, when we look back thousands of years and we go back to the beginning of the most ancient languages, we can see something really amazing. We can see that at the beginning, they only had words for black and white and shades in between. All the colours were there, just like they are now, but there weren't the words for them, so people didn't perceive them in the same way. So yellow was just like a sort of dark shade of white. The first colour to appear in all the ancient languages across the board was red. And then there was quite a big gap in time, and then yellow and green started to appear, first as shades of one another, and then separating into two different colours. But there was no blue until much, much later, it doesn't matter if you read ancient Chinese stories, Hindu Vedas, the original Hebrew Bible, or Icelandic sagas. They don't mention blue anywhere. Trust me, I've, I've, I've read them all. To really appreciate this language thing, try this experiment at home. Make a baby, raise it well, feed it, etc. But never ever tell it about the colour blue. And then, eventually, when it comes of age, ask it what colour the sky is. Someone has actually done this already. So first, the child thought the sky was completely colourless, and then eventually decided that it was white. And only when they went to school, after the relentless peer pressure, did they decide that actually it was maybe blue. So why is the sky blue? A lot of people think it's because the sky reflects the sea, but then why is the sea blue? And why is the sky so blue above the Sahara Desert? Something's a missing here. We think of the eye as having three different kinds of colour detecting cell. Red, green, and blue. So with a dedicated blue detecting cell, it seems pretty weird that the Himba people can't identify the blue square, but they still struggle. Now, when you stimulate the blue and the red simultaneously, you see sort of purple, magenta. And when you stimulate the red and the green simultaneously, you see yellow, which seems weird, but it happens. When light hits the atmosphere, it strikes the particles in the air and bounces off them. And this is called Rayleigh scattering. It happens the most for blue light because blue is the highest energy light. As Lincoln says, blue bends best. The result is that blue light scatters all over the place and then it comes at us from every direction. So if you look at the blue sky, then the light that you're looking at is actually coming from the sun. It's just taking a weird route to get to you. Meanwhile, the lower energy green light and the even lower energy red light come at you directly from the sun. So if you stare into the sun for business, leisure or otherwise, then you'll see both the colours mixed together and so it will appear yellow. It gets even more interesting when the sun is setting because now the light has to come in at an angle relative to the earth. And that means that it has to go through an F ton of atmosphere, which means that all of the blue light scatters. And the green light scatters so much so that you can barely see it. But the red light, that's the only one that gets almost directly to your eyes. And so the sun looks red. And the hotter the air is, 
the more that the light scatters, and so the more intensely red the sunset becomes. Oh, it's going to be a romantic one tonight. The moment that the sun disappears behind the horizon, the stream of photons of light is cut off. So the last few photons of red light have the shortest distance to go, so they get to your eyes first. Now the blue photons, we can forget about them because they've scattered so much, but the green photons, they're just taking a slightly longer route than the red ones. And so the last few green photons arrive a little bit later than the red ones. And that means, if you've ever seen it, that every single sunset, just after the sun disappears, flashes green. It's called green flash. If you can get a photograph of it, send it to me. I'd love to see it. Remember, the green flash is easier to see the hotter the atmosphere becomes. Come on, atmosphere. Come on. Thanks for watching. Share the knowledge. Get together. Talk about it. Form formidable groups. Conquer the universe. And remember, the easiest place to find all of my science in the bath episodes is on my YouTube channel. Oh, and if you're watching this as I release it, I'm running a competition for people to come and have a meal with me, talk about the science things. So scroll down my Facebook feed and you'll find the entry video there.